Okay, for this one, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, use uh, impact and momentum uh, when the guy, when the ball gets to this point right here. Uh, and so in order to do that, uh, I have to determine the, uh, the velocities, right? So, well, let's just, let's just do it. Okay, so the, the ball is going to hit at that red spot right there. Now, what is the uh, normal direction? Well, the normal direction is going to be right along here. Because it, it, if, you, if you blow it up, here's the ball, here's the floor. There's the contact point, there's the center of the ball. You draw a line between those two points, and that's the normal direction. So this is the normal direction. It's normal to the surface, right? So anyway, so that's the normal direction. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll do the, the, the collision there. Okay, so um, up here, um, the, uh, uh, what I'm looking for is a, uh, a system that I can choose where the, the big impulsive you know, force, the contact force, the impact force, is zero. Well, the problem is you can't do that because the large force is in that direction right there because it hits the floor. You can't take the ball and the floor together because you don't know the forces on the floor. Okay, so I can't use the momentum. What can I use? You can use the, um, co uh, the rest restitution equation. So E, and that has to be applied in the normal direction. All right, so E is equal to, uh, it'll be the ball, which I'll call uh, uh, B for ball, right? Uh, it'll be the ball and the floor, okay? And it's the, the velocities after the collision along the normal. So this would be the, the speed of the ball in the normal after the collision. We'll call it like that, okay? Which way is he bouncing? Oh, I don't know. Let's call him uh, positive. So this would be the positive normal direction, right? Minus, okay, how fast is the floor moving after the collision? Nothing. He's, he's being held down. Divided by uh, before the collision. Now I have to reverse them, okay? So before the collision, how fast is the ball moving? Or excuse me, the floor. None. Minus Okay, before the collision, before the collision, how fast is the ball going? Well, let's see, he, he'll have a speed of the ball in the normal before the collision. Which way do you think he's headed? Oh, I think he's headed in the positive uh, normal. Okay, so there you go. Now, uh, I have, uh, I know the coefficient of restitution, I know the E, what I don't know is I don't know the velocity of the ball after the collision, and I don't know the velocity of the ball before the collision. So I've got to find out how fast is the ball going just before he hits. Okay, so new problem. How fast is the ball going just before he hits the floor? Well, is that an energy problem? It's a time spanner. I can find all of the work done by the forces. It's only gravity. That's all there is. Um, and I don't care how long it takes to get to the floor. Okay, so it's a perfect energy. So I'm going to take my gravity energy right here. And uh, so that'll be my zero gravity energy. And, uh, and so this will be the initial point right up here. Okay, so here we go. How much uh, work is done by the force? None, because there are no forces except gravity. So that equals final energy. Well, what's the final energy? Well, it's going to be one half mass times the speed of the ball uh, squared. Okay. Um, and that's it's not in the normal. It's just the speed, right? One half mv squared. Um, do you have any gravity down there? No, because that's where I'm choosing the zero gravity. Got any springs? No. Okay, minus. What's the initial energy? The initial energy would be mass times gravity times the, the distance from the zero gravity, zero. It's positive energy because it's above the zero. Do you have any uh, kinetic up there? No, because he's being dropped from rest. Okay, so what that does is I've got this unknown right here. Right. Let me let me highlight these guys. I don't know that one, and I don't know that one, uh, and I don't know v b squared. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve. I'm going to take the energy equation, and I'm going to solve for v b squared. Uh, v b. Well, okay. V b is going to equal 
um, let's see, it's square root of 2gh, I think is, you know, I've just got it memorized, let's see, uh, square root of 2gh, yeah, because the masses, dis, you know, cancel, and uh, so let's see, put that over there, yep, 2 times g times the height is 2, you take the square root. So that's the that's the uh, speed of the ball just before it hits. Okay, now what I need is I need the uh, the speed in the normal direction. So let's draw a, a blow a blow up picture of it. So there's the normal. Uh, there's the floor. And let's see if we can get the ball in here. So there's the ball. And what he's doing is he's going straight down this way. Right, and how fast is he going? He's going square root of 4g. That's how fast he's going. Okay, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this this value right here. I'll put him in in red. I'm looking for this speed right there. I want to know what that one is. Okay. Well, let's let me draw some uh, angles here. All right, so this angle right there is 30. So if that angle is 30, this one here is 60. Uh, and so this one here is 30. All right, so the, the red line that I'm looking for is going to be, and so this is V of the ball in the normal direction before the collision is equal to square root of 4G times the cosine of 30. Okay, now which way is he headed? Well, he's in the negative normal direction. Okay, so that's, so that's negative, right? Okay, so that gets me the uh, this term right here. Right, so then I can solve for VB, VB normal after the collision. Okay, I also need to find out what's the speed of the ball after the collision in the plane direction. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for in this direction. Okay, we'll take a look at the free body diagram of the, of the, of the ball. The only big force that's acting on it is right here. It's the one that's in the normal. There's no forces, no big forces on the ball in the plane direction. So I'm going to apply momentum for the ball alone and I'm going to do it in the plane. So that would be no big forces, and that equals the final momentum in the plane. That'll be mass of the ball times the speed of the ball in the plane after the collision. Which way is he going? I don't know. I'm going to call this the positive plane direction. So I think he's going in the positive, okay? Minus mass times speed of the ball in the plane before the collision. Okay, well, what is that term? That term right there is this one. Okay, so what is he? He is equal to, um, okay, let me put parentheses around him because I have this negative right there, right? Now, let's plug in uh, the mass of the ball is, uh, well, it's one kilogram, but I'll just put it in as M. Velocity of the ball, that's the square root of 4G. Uh, and, uh, and I'm looking for this, this term right here, so that would be the sine of 30. And which way is he headed? He's headed down the incline, so he's, he's in the positive direction. So there's a positive right there. Okay, now, for this equation right here, how many unknowns are there? There's one unknown right there. Okay, so I can solve for that. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna find out where he hits down there at C. Okay, so here's the, the incline. He's gonna take off like this. And what I know is, I know that this velocity right there is m, that'll be the velocity of the ball in the normal after the collision. And then I also have a speed this way, 
which is the velocity of the ball in the plane after the collision. And I've got both of those numbers. I've, I've solved this guy for the ball in the normal after, and I've solved this one, normal uh, velocity of the ball in the plane after. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, uh, this looks just like chapter 12 where you have the ball flying through the air. Here's your mg, right? And um, and so I, what I'm what I'm going to do is just you know try to you know find the uh, the the where where the thing hits. Okay, so here's here's what I'm going to do. All right, uh, I need to. Um, uh, find the acceleration of the ball. Well, when it's in flight after the collision, it's just G because nothing else is touching it. Okay. Is that a constant? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, then I can use those handy formulas, right? Y equals Y zero plus V Y zero T uh, plus one half uh, A uh, T squared. Right. Now, uh, what direction should I be using? Should I be going along the plane and perpendicular to the plane? No. What do you do? You always use directions where the acceleration is easy. Okay? So the acceleration is vertical and it's zero in the horizontal. I'm going to choose horizontal and vertical. N has nothing to do with the plane. Okay? So, uh, and then the other, you have another formula for X, right? So what I'm saying is, you, you know, don't get fooled by saying it's an incline. No, you, you have your X direction like this and you have your Y direction like this. Why? Because that's where the acceleration is easy, it, horizontal and vertical. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to choose this as the origin so that's nice and easy. So I'll say, okay, Y is equal to, uh, what's the original Y? Zero. What's the original y velocity? Okay, well here's the here's the, the the problem. Okay, I've got a little piece right here, and I have a little piece right there. Okay, and this angle right there, this angle is 30 degrees. So this one is 60. This one is 30. And the angle down here, this one is 30. All right, so the vertical velocity initially is V, B, normal, A, cosine of 60, or cosine of 30, up, minus V, B, P, A, sine of, uh, sine of 30, down. That's why he's negative. That's the initial velocity in the Y. Times time. Uh, minus one half g t squared. Okay, let's do the x. Okay, so the x of where he hits is equal to where's his x originally? Zero. What's his x initial velocity? It's going to be v b in a sine of 30. And it's positive because he's headed to the right. And then you have v b p a uh, cosine of 30 and uh, he would be uh, also positive because he's also headed to the right. That's the initial uh, velocity times t. What's the acceleration in the horizontal? Zero. Okay, now what do you got left that's unknown? I don't know the y, I don't know the x, and I don't know the t. Three equations or excuse me, three unknowns, only two equations. What are you going to do? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to come in here and say, all right, I'll tell you what, I know that he's going to hit somewhere down here on the C. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a relationship between the, the X and the, and, the, uh, and the Y. Well, I know that this guy right here, you know, this is where he hits, right? That's the X coordinate. He's going to hit right there. This is the Y value where he hits. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, uh, what I know is that if I do, uh, well, let me do it this way. This is probably the easiest way to e explain it. Let's call it a distance D, okay? X, the value of X where he hits is equal to D times the cosine of 30. 
the y where he hits is equal to a minus d sine of 30. Why minus? Because he's going down. See that? Right? So if, if d is 10 feet or whatever, uh, the y distance is going to be 10 sine 30 negative. Okay, now, how many unknowns? Well, I've picked up an extra one here, so I have four unknowns. How many equations you got? You got one, two, three, four. Now, there's a lot of algebra here. Do you really think something like that is you're going to be able to do in, in two hours? Well, you probably can, but nothing else. Okay, anyway, that's how you do that. There's a lot of algebra, but that's the way you set the equation up. Okay, all right.